Gentlemen, welcome to Tommy Reacts to the hundreds the biggest battles in the world. Let's react to the battle of Kadesh. The first major battle in the book. Let's go. Kind of exciting. The Mediterranean Bronze Age is undeniably one of the most interesting periods in all of human history. The era owes part of its allure to a vague similarity to our own. First of all, it's crazy to me how in 2022 historians know about this battle. There's like no sources, right? There's a bunch of written old tables and stuff, and you have to work so hard to find out what happened back in the day. I would think as an amateur that the information is very vague. You never really know what really happened because it's just so fucking long ago. From like, the Mycenaean any info about and Minoan this, you know? Greeks in the West to the ancient Mesopotamian kingdoms of Babylon and Assyria in the East, the Bronze Age saw the development of a complex multipolar system of highly organized states. Although rivals for influence and power, these kingdoms also depended on one another for the crucial trade resources needed to keep civilization going. Two of the heavyweight monarchies during the later Bronze Age were Egypt's New Kingdom and the Hittite Empire. Hittite. As the 13th century that. BC began, Hittite these two Empire. military powerhouses fought the for Hittites. hegemony over the rich lands of Syria. This clash of titans <laughs> eventually all, all culminated all in the first battle Almost in right. all history to be recorded in detail, the Battle of Kadesh. Ah, the first battle in human history to be, to be reported in detail. Ah, we don't know if the, the Egyptian Hittite. pharaohs used their headdresses to cover their bald spots, but we know that the sponsor of this video, Keeps, wants to help you with that problem. Two out of three guys will experience some kind of hair loss or male pattern uh, baldness you fuckers, by huh? the time they're That's 35, 1, fuckers and chat. Keeps is your best option to prevent hair fucked. loss. It it's happened fucked. to the main historian of the channel, and although it's too late for him, it's not too late for you. He didn't act on time, but that shouldn't be the case for you, as Keeps allows you to get treated from home. As thanks to Keeps, that must be really fun to be a historian, like study history, and then work for a YouTuber. That must be really, you know. Oftentimes, certain courses like history, when you study history, it's very hard to find a job there, right? Like nobody needs a historian in modern capitalism. But getting hired by a YouTuber and working for them—that sounds amazing. A lot of you fucking weirdos would love that, huh? Do you like can you're avoid researching an history and then you make video video? And your hair loss medication can be delivered to your home. Keeps YouTube offers really generic future, versions right? of two FDA apps. To You'll be surprised by the price. Remember, prevention is the key in these matters. Keeps treatments this is, usually this sounds take between scammy, four to six months to see results. Sorry to so hero in general, man, but fast. you can't really uh, stop using Keeps, hair loss. The more hair you'll man. save. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Hundreds this of thousands of men trust me. Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. If you're ready to act and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash kings or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Oh. Syria, during the late Bronze Age, oh. served as the overflowing entrepot of the interconnected ancient Near Eastern world. Like that really existed. Trading vessels from People across the Aegean then. docked at thriving port cities such as Ugarit, swelling their markets with wares, including ivory, textiles, food, timber, as well as two components of bronze itself, tin and copper. Land trade routes snaked throughout the Middle East and distributed these wares, returning with exotic eastern materials such as the mystical lapis lazuli. Complementing a flourishing commerce, the region was itself blessed with a great agricultural fertility and wealth of natural resources. Mm -hmm. This bounty, together with Syria's vast array of squabbling city-states and small kingdoms, rendered the region vulnerable to surrounding powers. In the 15th century BC, the two <coughs> major predators fighting for control over the resources of Syria were Egypt's militaristic New Kingdom and the Kingdom of Mitanni. Having only mm -hmm. recently cast off the yoke of the Asiatic Hyksos, Egypt's new rulers sought to create a strategic buffer. This is 3,000 years ago and there has already been so much war in the region, man. Fur of vassals the Middle East to prevent truly such an fucked from the beginning, from happening again. After generations of internecine warfare, Mitanni, under threat from a dynamic new force in Anatolia and this new Egyptian empire, finally concluded a lasting peace in around four- Tutmos IV of Egypt wed the daughter of Mitanni, King Artatama I, and borders were drawn. The kings frequently referred to one another as beloved brothers and granted another- 1920 BC. 
This era of tranquility and brotherhood between great powers marks the apex of the Late Bronze Age, especially for the Pharaonic Empire. Vast tribute from Egypt's Canaanite vassal states poured into Memphis's coffers and flooded the kingdom in gold, while trade routes functioned unimpeded by warfare. Such prosperity, however, was not to last. A few generations after the Concordat, in roughly 1344, the growing threat on Mitanni's northwestern frontier finally made its move. Led by the warlike usurper king Zupiluluma I, this budding Hittite empire burst forth from its rough Anatolian Abenaki heartland Turkey. astride great and launched two lightning wars of conquest against Mitanni. These conflicts culminated in the sack of the Mitanni capital and the kingdom's final destruction. Crucially, the Hittites intruded in Syria as part of their attacks usurping the strategically vital city of Kadesh and pushing Egypt's control south. This external threat came at a particularly inopportune time. I feel like in, in, in the first 3000 years of history written down, if you were a king, you had to always fight. Whatever you fucking do, there's always a guy attacking you. You cannot chill for a second, build a fucking harem, have sex all day. No, sir, sir, in the west there's barbarians, in the north there's a bunch of fucks. Blah, blah, blah. Time Always for someone the coming, of dude. The, pharaohs. the contentious reign of the so called heretic pharaoh, Akhenaten, followed by the weakness of his son, Tutankhamun, and the subsequent fall of the 18th dynasty. Horamheb was a general who took the throne despite having no real relation to the royal family. He managed to restore the kingdom and later gave Ramses the first the throne after him, initiating the 19th Ensured dynasty. Egypt was distracted. 19 dynasties, man. It's fucking 1344 BC. At home what for the many fuck is years. this shit? What an early game. All the while, the Hittites consolidated power in Syria and flipped the Nile realm's vassals to their allegiance. That status quo soon changed once more with the advent of yet another line of Nilotic monarchs. Seti I of the 19th dynasty I heard personally before. led Egyptian armies into Asia for the first time in decades, asserting pharaonic imperial authority, recapturing the traitorous... Man, I always wonder, we gotta watch video, how do you feed 20,000 men in this timeline? They, they were so technology not far, right? And 20,000 fucking people walking through this fucking Middle Eastern shit? How the fuck do you logistically Vassals do of that? Kadesh and Amaru, and even defeating a Hittite force. Unfortunately for Seti, however, he proved unable the to food? maintain oh, tight I control by eating their own territories feet, so idiot. distant from the center of his authority, and eventually concluded peace. By the time of Seti's death in 1279 BC, both Amaru and Kadesh yeah, better had once than fucking more Vladimir fallen Putin. under the Hittite aegis. True. Seti was succeeded by his prodigious son, Ramses II. Egypt's new monarch first dealt with Sherdan pirates and nomads on his- Sherdan were one of the ethnic groups belonging to the Sea Peoples. After they were defeated, Ramses recruited a number of them into his guard. Is that the first fucking, um, Varangian guard, man? Sea People recruited by a, a king, an emperor. That's the first Varangian guard, bro. Frontier, before turning his attention to Canaan. Understanding the unsuitability of Thebes as a royal seat when conducting military expeditions in Asia, Ramses the, the capital during Egypt during this time was Thebes, rel relatively far south along the Nile. This is partially why the city of Pi Ramses was eventually created as a center of pharaonic power in Second, the north. Built an entirely new capital on the eastern Nile Delta, which he that this architecture, which was made thousands of years ago, is still represented today. For example, in the Washington Monument in front of the White House. That's so crazy. And that shows you that reptilian people are real. He ever so humbly yeah. renamed P. Ramses, the House of Ramses. The new capital served as a clear statement that he fully intended to reassert the authority Such of the twin crown it's, it's on Canaan. The sequence of events that triggered Egypt's direct intervention in Syria is obscure in our records. However, it is likely that Amaru, playing the dangerous game of vassal politics, again changed sides and swore allegiance to Egypt. In the fourth year of his reign, 1275, Ramses II marched his army north to secure the subject state and make a bold statement of intent to the vile Hatti. The pharaoh returned to P. Ramses at the conclusion of the relatively quiet campaigning season, ready for a climactic conflict season. in the next year. 
Just makes you want to play Rome, huh? The Hittites had been fighting internecine skirmishes in the north, east and west of their realm for years, and that had weakened their response. Matters, however, had calmed by the mid-1270s. So, in the winter of 1275, King Muwatali II levied warriors from across the territories he controlled and hired mercenaries, and in doing so, assembled the greatest army in the history of the Hittite Empire. In 1270- And back then, 20,000 men? That must have been like half the fucking men in an area. Like if these 20,000 men died, this area is having a big problem. And the young boys are gonna have a great time. Dude. 24, Muwatali and Ramses both led their armies into Syria, where they encountered oh, one shit. another near the city of Kadesh. Before we detail the fascinating clash of these late Bronze Age heavyweights, just we must first show detail up. the armies with which they went to battle. In contrast to the classical and medieval eras of history, in which infantry, cavalry, and iron weapons... I don't always think it's exa exaggerated numbers. I would think that a real historian would look scientifically for the truth and wouldn't just be like, oh, 20,000. I think they would really try to base this on some kind of evidence, man. ...weapons were the norm in warfare. Bronze Age warfare was very different. It was marked by two standout features. Firstly, bronze itself. An alloy of tin and copper used Lord to forge the tools, that. Tin weapons, copper. and armor of the era. Secondly, horse-drawn chariots, the elite mounted force of the age. The pharaonic army of Ramses II utilized incredibly versatile chariots, Two whose chariots attributes either. were speed and maneuverability. That's so much. These vehicles appeared lightweight and even fragile at first glance, but were in reality reliable and robust. Much like the later forces of light cavalry horse archers employed by civilizations such as the Huns and Mongols, Egyptian chariots were similarly designed. Is it funny how this is giving you a video game vibe? I mean, he's using video game, but this really happened. This is history. But you're kind of like, ah, oh, this is a cool video game. Turn I want to be part of this. Reins of deadly Where can I make my character? The enemy ranks while avoiding a grueling melee. When we look at the raw numbers for any given battle, it's Dude, as a kid, I always had this dream. You probably had that too. Imagine in the future, when technology is more far ahead, you can put on a VR set, or maybe even ma Matrix, go into the game, and you can be part of every battle in history, man. You are just going in, and you're just a random guy, like this. And you're just fucking, whoa, and you're fucking experiencing it, man. I don't know if that's in a video game setting, right? Not like like real and people are getting beheaded and shit. That probably is a bit traumatic. But like in a video game setting or something. Or like 10k versus 10k real people or something. Common to split Always, the army. As a kid you dreamt about this shit, right? Infantry now you know though, for example. these games are way However, too trash this though. It's probably 50 more years. the tactical flexibility of Ramses' chariot corps. Rather than serving in one large block, the aristocratic charioteers of the New Kingdom's great empire were instead divided among the infantry regiments to create a combined arms military force. Overall, it is likely that the pharaoh mustered around 2,000 chariots, manned by 4,000 men, for the Jeez. campaign of 1274 BC. How do you feed these fuckers? While the dashing I mean, they have superstars the water from of the, the age river. were these charioteers, the true workhorses of Egypt... Also, I have so many weird questions. When I drink from this river in fucking 1.2k BC, you have to always cook the water, right? You can't just drink the water, you're gonna get sick. They had to always cook the water, right? 100%. 100%. 100%. I don't think they pillage all the people's villages. They just ask for food and shit. Well-oiled military remain... They're not just drinking that. That's bullshit, man. You will get sick so often. It's ever reliable Their buddies were accustomed to that back then. During oh, Ramses' Kadesh campaign, the army's 16,000 foot troops, with and vine. raised with the aid of Egypt's famously stringent bureaucracy, were they arrayed in divisions raised locally and named after a local god. These were Amun, Ra, Ta, and Set, each possessing... 4,000 men were then divided into 20 Sa companies of between 200 to 250 men each. These were then further divided into units of 50 men who would fight in a shield wall. So you were a part of a uh, of 50 men. 4,000 infantry this is so... and an accompanying fight. Dude, this kind of battalion organization is still nowadays, man. This is crazy. 
critics, both ancient and modern, have criticized Ramses for dividing his army in such a way. Critics have criticized him. The dude is dead 3,000 years. You're still getting uh, criticized. Thank you, man. Thank you for stop. Without depleting the land of supplies and pursuing many tactical objectives simultaneously made it worth the risk. As for the infantry themselves, experienced professionals known as Menfit would form the front ranks, while raw recruits or Nefru made up the rear and reserves. Foreigners or mercenaries, including Canaanites, Libyans, Sherdans, and particularly Nubian archers, also served in the pharaoh's Nubian army. Nubian archers, they were like really famous, right? We know right? far less about Moetali's army They're than we do about that Rome. of Ramses, but there are cogent details we can piece together. Most notable were the brutal Hittite chariots. In contrast to the vehicle... It's crazy these guys who fought there had no idea 3,000 years later we would know about them on the internet. Yeah, I think about that often. And in 3,000 more years, we have no idea what they'll do to us. Probably just, you know, go into the Matrix and live among us or some shit. Thank you, Bembo. ...of their Egyptian enemies. These vehicles were far heavier, clearly built for weight and power on the charge. With a centrally balanced axle and a three-man crew wielding large thrusting spears, Hittite chariots focused on smashing into masses of enemy infantry and breaking them apart by force. In addition to the heartland forces this, this raised sounds from very good for itself, Egypt here, doesn't it? Muatali marched to war at the head of troops from 18 allied and vassal states. They included the previously mentioned city-state of Ugarit, Kachemish, subjugated Mitanni and Azawa, a land on the faraway Aegean coast of Asia Minor. This Hittite army seems to have slightly outnumbered its southern foe, counting around... That's what Elon Musk once said, that was so scary. Look, these guys never knew what technology we will have. And Elon Musk said that on the Joe Rogan podcast, right? What if in 3,000 years, what they do is, they relive a memory. Like, you right now are a person in 3,000 years reliving the current memory. Like, a guy in 3,000 years is like, I, I want to be a ginger for like uh, 80 years and see what it's like to be a streamer. And he goes into... Ugh. Like, that was so sick when Elon said that. What if life... Is the reliving of a memory. Oh, thank you, Chuck. Around 15,000 infantry and 10,000 charioteers. Again, in contrast to Egypt, Muatali's forces were indeed focused on the shock chariot assault as their primary tool for achieving victory. On the ninth day of the third month of 1274 summer season, sometime in late May, Pharaoh Ramses was encamped with his vanguard Amun division in hill country one day's march south of Kadesh. Half a day behind Amun marched the Ra division, followed by Ta and Set, half a day each further this south still. Right, split, man. You okay, Shortly dude? after daybreak, Ramses broke camp and marched north along the east bank of the Orontes before fording the river near Ribla. This took several hours. And it was at this point that the army captured two Shesu Bedouin nomads and brought them into the pharaoh's august presence. According to Egyptian sources, when pressed for information, these seemingly innocuous cattle herders told Ramses that the fallen one of Hatti is in the land of Kalib to the north of Tunip. For the Egyptians, this news was very welcome. They had apparently arrived at Kadesh first and therefore had complete control over the battlefield while the Hittites languished in fear days away. However, it is likely that these informants were in fact sent by the cunning Muatali to mislead the pharaoh. As unknown to him, the Hittites were in fact deception. very Thank you, close Eric, at man, hand. Thank you, man. As yet unaware of his dire peril, Ramses pushed the Amun division onto Kadesh, where it Dude, constructed totally a camp equipped with a defensive perimeter and embankments with soldiers' shields placed around the top for additional protection. The very center of the camp contained a shrine to the <clears> god Amun and the pharaoh's royal pavilion. Scouts were dispatched to reconnoiter the surrounding land late in the day, and one of them swiftly returned with something curious. Two prisoners had been lurking suspiciously near the Egyptian encampment. Initially, these men refused to respond to the pharaoh's questions. However, after being given a sound beating, <laughs> They gave up information that was both invaluable and terrifying in equal measure. Apparently in confusion, Ramses asked, What are you? Attempting to ascertain who had sent them. They admitted to being sent by Muatali. Ramses's heart would have dropped. In truth, 
The Hittites were shrouded behind a nearby mound to the northeast oh! at Old Kadesh, furnished with their infantry and their chariotry, so carrying their me. weapons of warfare, and are more numerous than the sand of the riverbanks. To Ramses's credit, his reaction seems to have not been one of panic or over-hasty, but efficiency and eagerness to remedy his own mistake in a comprehensive manner. He also seems to have owned that mistake. As the Egyptian, I want to do. So, I, I'm sorry. I want to. Be, I want to Google Maps Kadesh and see if it still looks like this. Kadesh, Syria. Here's that. That thing, but it doesn't split like that. Sources oh. do not attempt. I mean, that probably is really dumb. What I'm doing right now. Yeah, that looks very different. Homs. Wait, is that Kadesh here? Is that? I don't. I don't fucking understand this dude. Is this Kadesh? No, Kadesh. Archaeological site. Okay. Quatina Lake. The lake is here still. To conceal it. But these rivers probably Regardless, changed. The Pharaoh immediately sent senior officials south in order to hurry the, the other three change divisions of Rad Tarin Makes sense. to Kadesh uh -oh. at top speed. Another speculative messenger was also sent north to summon a fifth division of foreign troops who might have been able to help the Ne'arin. South of Ramses's camp, Ra crossed the Orontes and began trudging towards their lord's camp, about seven miles north. Well, Talali should totally backstep the them, man. Like, go here. And old Kadesh, cut off the supply, Lord man. received reports that an Egyptian army of Almost some like, size like had again. closed in. He was, however, as of yet unsure where exactly the pharaoh was or the true size of his enemy's forces. Based on what happened next. It is assumed that the Hittite monarch sent a 500-strong chariot contingent south as a reconnaissance in force, instructed to gather as much information as possible. While the 5,000 troops of Ra made for Ramses's camp, Muwatali's substantial chariot scouting force skirted the hill on which Kadesh was built and then crossed the Orontes, emerging to the right of Ra's desperately exposed <coughs> marching column. The heavy Hittite chariots improvised, and now, with little other option, launched a direct charge at the Egyptian reinforcement division. Utterly taken aback, the Egyptian chariots screening Ra's right flank were swept away. The Are you telling me these 500 chariots to took down 5,000 dudes? Fuck off. Broke apart. What? Rather than staying to destroy Come on. Ra, which, given a concerted Hittite attempt, How almost the certainly that could have been done. The assaulting chariots the simply carved through trait. the column and emerged from the other yeah, side. How did they go with the river Egyptian chariots? Warriors, probably a greater portion of the untested Nefru, fled to all points of the compass. But it's clear that the chariots and some Menfit veterans made an orderly withdrawal in Ramses's direction. Thus ensued a race against time. Swift Egyptian chariots seeking to warn their pharaoh of the danger versus lumbering Hittite vehicles on the attack. Chariots are Fresh from yeah, their near destruction 5, of the unfortunate Ra division just minutes earlier, the Hittites swept north in an arc and beelined directly at the western side of the pharaoh's camp. The camp itself, having received the withdrawing chariots and able to see the incoming dust cloud, was abuzz with panicked activity. Amun division soldiers and Ramses' guard armed themselves and rushed to the defence. But it's cool the that Pharaoh's the Pharaoh's family members is, hurried is to the other side the battle, of man. the camp. Then the Hittites struck, smashing straight through the shield wall and beginning a melee. Although more they Egyptian soldiers... Yeah, true. Uh, I think it's important to understand that back then these were mostly just normal fucking dudes. And when they, they just panicked quickly, they would probably panic very, very quickly. Yeah. Panicked, ran or died where they stood. The obstructive tents, vast wealth stores <clears throat> and other camp distractions were slowing and disorienting the Hittite assault. Yeah, yeah, Many so charioteers, guys, huh? no doubt believing victory had been achieved, turned to looting and their momentum died. In turn, the Egyptian infantry turned about and advanced slowly, pulling Hittite chariot crews out of their now impotent vehicles and dispatching them with the famously armed... Dude, I always comp. wonder what, what that must have felt like in real life. And I don't mean childish video thinking, ch -ch -ch -ch. Like in real life, man, you're pulling someone off a chariot and you fucking kill them, dude. You must have sweat. You must have been scared, full of adrenaline. It must have smelled like shit and iron because of the blood. It must really been very traumatic. We like to always uh, romanticize this stuff and, and like in video games and everything, but you must have gotten so traumatized from that shit, man. Pesh blade. Every it must have been so random if you die or not. Was gone. 
Within the royal pavilion, and bedecked in a long coat of armor, end, Ramses II donned the Capresh make, war then. crown of the pharaohs and mounted the royal chariot, pulled by his own personal steeds, victory in Thebes and beloved of Amun. With a command to Mena, his own chariot driver, the pharaoh gathered whatever of the Amun and Ra chariotry remained and led it out of the camp by the eastern approach. With Ramses at their head, the Egyptians swept northwest oh, get and shit prepared on to confront oh. the Hittites. Chariot First, we let's chariot. Them in historically, dude. As their divine Ramses, the, signal, the Egyptian Shopner. chariot swoops down upon the numerically greater enemy throng at rapid speed, oh, unleashing arrow mate. volleys and wheeling about. To and when these 500 green chariots must have known, bro, we're fucking dying here. We're not gonna see another day. We're gonna. Our goal here is to harass this camp. Do so again and we're gonna and again. get fucked, man. All while the, while, the main the army Hittites is not helping us. To react. As a Ramside source, known as the Bulletin, tells us, Then His Majesty entered into the host of the Hatti enemies, His Majesty being like Set the Great of strength, and like Sakmet at the moment of her raging, and His Majesty killed the entire host of the wretched Fallen One of Hatti. Yeah, he killed them all the alone. disordered Hittite formation shattered just as the Ra division had, Hatti warriors fleeing desperately just as Ramses pressed the counterattack with greater force. A greater portion of the Anatolian Empire's 500 chariots lay broken on the field, along with their riders, and Egyptian infantry followed up to finish the job with clinical brutality. You know what video game the world needs? A dynasty warriors in ancient times. In historical ancient times. A dynasty warriors. That probably exists, you're gonna tell me? That sounds great. Muwatali, observing this disaster from a vantage near Kadesh, was accompanied only by his elite charioteers and vassal rulers. But realizing he had to act now, the Hittite king formed them up Shit, and prepared to go. make his own attack. Muwatali had his vassals cross the Orontes and launch an attack against the eastern part of the now almost oh, undefended fight. Egyptian camp. What is nice Ramses warriors? and his I chariots old, were I elsewhere, old. and it seemed that the Hittites were about to flip the battle once more. However, at the moment of catastrophe and the possible capture of the pharaoh's family, the Ne'arin division arrived from the north like How did they come of... from the north? They were south! What? The Egyptian gods themselves what a plot and twist. engaged the newly arrived Hittite Oh force. shit, you got fucked, man. As a grateful Ramses would later have inscribed on his mortuary temple at Thebes, the Ne'arin broke into the host of the wretched fallen one of Hatti as they were entering the camp of pharaoh and the servants of his majesty killed them. Muwatali's chariot force they sent also for routed back across the Orontes, leaving behind many destroyed vehicles as they went. Ramses drew back into the ruin yeah, of his camp to his rest. Family. Later that day, the clever though, clever though, so his wife doesn't do, you know, clever. Oh, what the fuck? Sorry. Ar and Amun troops who had fled during the fighting. The next day. Ramses lined up those troops of Amun and Ra, whose bravery had been found wanting, on the plains outside Kadesh. The pharaoh had them all executed as punishment for their transgression, oh. almost certainly in full view of Moatali. Oh, the shit, psychological. Like, this is unimaginable. Imagine you just chilled there with your family, you, you're just a farmer, and they come in and just destroy you, man. And they just fuck you the up, The impact man. of this fearful Shit. display and the like, extensive losses in so men and Dude, morale they. among the Hittite king's chariot forces that was led some him to propose a truce to the Egyptians. Ramses, who had also taken substantial losses in the inconclusive battle, accepted. Hold up, left days before Pharaonic probably, sources yeah. attempted to magnify Ramses' tactical triumphs during the Battle of Kadesh, but it cannot be said to be anything other than a strategic disaster for the new kingdom. Weakened as his army had been by the clash with the Hittites, the pharaoh was forced to withdraw back to Egypt. In his wake came Muwatali, who, tailing Ramses, occupied the province of Upe. Worse still, the perceived failure of Egypt's campaign sparked a great anti-Egyptian revolt throughout Canaan. Ramses II, later to be known as Ramses the Great, fought a number of further campaigns in Canaan and Syria during the subsequent years of his reign, with the aim of recovering territories lost in the post-Kadesh revolts. However, the crucial vassals of Kadesh and Amaru would remain in Hittite hands permanently. Sixteen years after the Battle of Kadesh, Ramses concluded the world's earliest surviving peace treaty with Muwatali's successor. Wow, the, 
the earliest surviving peace treaty of the human race man fuck dude and i i, I always i sometimes have these thoughts this is probably somewhere right now in some museum or something and historians are allowed to touch this and like and look into it that must be imagine the privilege of being able to work with this thing man what a privilege that must have been the fucking third. mind blowing what the an two artifact allied kingdoms in london of course <laughs> until the notorious bronze age collapse when the entire civilization of the near east came to a chaotic end we'll talk more about the bronze age in our future videos so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button. Interesting, Please interesting, man. Liking, Shout out to Kings and Generals. That was the first battle of Tommy K reacts to the 100th biggest battle. Normie Cap Tommy has randomly visited you. It's time to click the video.